Hey y'all, let's talk color theory, some vocab and some color motifs. Besides the naphthol, cadmium red, ultramarine, blue, that that uh, handsome medium yellow, you all had to get a few other colors. And I want to talk about why we even bothered requesting those, those colors. Um, the quinacridone, which I'm going to refer to as magenta. Other similar name is Alzerian crimson, but I'm, I'm going to keep referring to magenta because quinacridone, I have a hard time saying. The other uh, color I had you buy was the phthalo blue, or I'm sorry, the phthalo green blue shade, and then the burnt umber, which is kind of like a, a shade of orange, and of course the titanium white. So let's talk about the primary colors, or the color wheel, or color triangle. It takes a few different forms. Um, the primary colors, the theory is that from these three colors, you can make all the colors of the rainbow spectrum. And I guess this, this, this is theory, theory versus practice. So the idea is you mix a pair of primary colors together, you get a secondary, right, which would be the orange, green, and purple. If you mix a primary and secondary, you get that sort of third tier, which would be uh, a variation of that secondary. So more reddish orange or more yellow orange or more purple, purplish or bluish purple or more reddish purple and so on and so forth. And then, you know, what happens when you mix these primaries all together? Well, depending on, on the amount of one color versus the other, you get more of a brown or you get get a gray depends how much you put so let's talk about some color motifs here we have what's called a monochromatic color theme and mono means one chromatic is color so I'm taking one color one hue and I'm just tinting it right now the top is ultramarine blue and I'm adding white 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 I'm working light to dark really and this this is not real click paint this is a simulation of digital software but it has it's the same principles Right, and it has the effect of me working wet on wet, very similar to working with acrylic paint wet on wet. Basic principle: work light to dark. But what about the shade? You know, when we talk about value structures, it go value structures we refer to lightness and darkness, right? So, is it possible to get this ultramarine to be darker? Um, yeah, sure, you can. And the way you do that is by using the complementary color of the hue you want to adjust or you want to shade. In this case, the opposite color, the complementary color is orange, right? So complementary colors are colors that are opposite on the coloring wheel. And what that does is when you put, the idea is that when you put complementary colors next to each other, they tend to intensify each other. When you blend them, they will tend to sort of dull one another or especially if they're dark colors, they will help to make a, a sort of black. So depending which way you go, adding more or one to the other, you'll get different kinds of blacks, or these are chromatic blacks. We have that gradation, and I'm gonna add the burnt umber to my ultramarine blue. And again, I'm gonna add work light to dark. The ultramarine blue is lighter than that, that mixture I made on top. And I'm just gonna sort of blend it together so you can see that gradual effect, the shade, to the hue, to the tints of ultramarine blue. Monochromatic gradation. Shade, hue, tint. Here's another gradation I want to talk about. It's also dealing with just ultramarine blue. So in a sense, it is still monochromatic. But this is dealing with saturation level, right? Saturation refers to the intensity of the hue, the brilliance of it, how dull it is or isn't. And this is going from saturated to unsaturated. It's going from color to tone. It's going from brilliant to dull. It's becoming great, right? It's monochromatic, it deals with value structure, but it can also deal with saturation level. Speaking of gray, my favorite color is actually a neutral gray. We used to refer to gray as comfortable gray or even grandma gray. My friends back in the day, we used to love wearing gray t-shirts because we felt like it was comfortable. I had a friend that really hated that and still disagrees to this day about it. But I like gray because depending on its neighbors or where it is, it shifts. You know, the color is relative to our surroundings. So it we perceive it differently depending on where the color is situated. I like that. I like how it's always in flux. So back to the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Those are complementary colors. The burnt umber is basically a shade of orange. Another way to make a dark chromatic black is by mixing that magenta color with the phthalo green. And I'm just sort of showing you 
um, I'm adding white to the streak here of each one so you can get a sense of, 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 that, of that chromatic black if it turns gray. Yes, yellow and purple also are complementary colors. You could theoretically mix those and get the, the black, but since you're not using a shade of yellow, it's not going to be that dark. You know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be lighter. So let's look at those colors that I had you buy that were the ones beyond the red, blue, and yellow, the magenta color, and we'll also and see what the differences are. They're both kind of reds, this magenta and this and this cadmium fire truck red. But you mix the blue with them, the purples tend to be a little bit different. And I think typically the cadmium naphthol red, the fire truck red purples tend to be almost a, a bit more dull or less intense not gray but they don't have that sort of kick like the magenta might have with the blue it's i i, I sort of feel like it's a, a synthetic type of purple that is being created and i'm just adding white so you can see how those differ put the purples next to each other also to differentiate them same thing with the ultramarine blue versus the phthalo green blue shade what kind of greens do we make when we add the yellow to it, right? Same kind of thing. I think the ultramarine is sort of synonymous with the red, the, the cadmium red, naphthol red, that they're both warm. The phthalo is a bit more intense, synthetic, so they make they make different greens that are um, just not all that different, but there's one that's just a bit more intense. And you have to kind of play around with wh which one you think would be more appropriate. If you're feeling like the color is just not as as brilliant as you would like, switch over to the other blue, or switch over to that that other red. Analogous color schemes. These are colors that just neighbor each other on the color wheel. And right now, this is a saturated analogous color scheme. I just took a portion of what's on the color wheel there, right? But it doesn't have to be completely saturated. You know, these color schemes. The analogous color scheme can differ by the value structure, lightness, darkness, and also by the saturation level, you know, dull or intense. And the same thing can be said with a complementary color scheme. And we talked about complementary colors a little bit already, but easy breezy. All right, I think that's it. See ya. Bye.